Uh, hello, thank you for joining uh, this presentation. Uh, I'm Robert Masolele. I'm a postdoc uh, research from Wageningen University. And uh, today, uh, this uh, bit changed the uh, title uh, using deep learning and uh, remote sensing to map the diverse of land use following the first session across Africa. And uh, mainly, uh, I will uh, start by stressing uh, on mainly three aspects or so ingredient of this uh, presentation, which are deep learning, remote sensing, and land use uh, following the first session. So uh, remote sensing uh, uh, from this perspective, we just mean looking uh, the earth from above, of course, it can be either by the use of satellite, a balloon, uh, airplane, or uh, drones. And uh, from a uh, uh, remote sensing perspective, you can get an uh, image of any place on the planet. And specifically here, we're talking about forest monitoring. And uh, you can capture a forest at a certain time. So if there is a forest is existing, and uh, if there is changes is happening on the forest, you can also detect it using uh, remote sensing. And uh, so in order to be able to address what kind of changes is, is taking uh, place uh, and the way the forest has changes has taken place, we use deep learning for automatic image understanding. And in this case, we try to analyze the separate data to try to understand what kind of activities are taking place. And those activities, we call them land use following deforestation. So when there is a deforestation and certain human activities and the land use is then is changed we call those land use following deforestation and for example here uh you can really identify okay there was a change and uh this change was really driven by large-scale crop and establishment so we uh we use uh planet mix mosaic data uh, which is available uh, uh five meter resolution uh, since 20, December 2015 to 2020. And uh, to, for this task, we use, so we use those images for, for training 2015 to 2020. And uh, we use our images for 2022 uh, as a proxy for monitoring, uh, seeing what kind of changes has been happening. And we use Hansen forest loss data, uh, which is a historical forest loss data from 2001 to 2020. Uh, we try to identify 15 land use classes, uh, we use uh, attention unit and active learning to do the uh, model learning process. And uh, we, in the end, we produce a water warm up uh, uh, covering 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the Africa. And also we try to identify the hotspot of, of different uh, land use categories. Uh, this is a uh, source data set. So the, the, all the data sets uh, we use uh, as reference data. So from different sources. Uh, uh, which were used for training and, of course, uh, validation uh, of the map or we produced. Uh, so going uh, a bit, uh, I will not go so much into detail, but this is like uh, a, a flow. So we have like a, a, a unit model. Uh, and then what we add is just the, the attention, so the attention gate which are uh, basically uh, format class classification. So uh, to try to put more importance of, of, on features of, of certain classes. And so when you have an input image, uh, you can put into the model, then you get the output classification. So basically if you have deforestation uh, and on areas where you have deforestation, the one which will be classified. So identified uh, what kind of land is existing. Of course, when we did our first uh, experiment, so we kind of, the accuracy was really low, but uh, through the process of iterating learning process, uh, uh, meaning involving human and loop, we are able to increase the accuracy from 43 to 84%. Uh, in the end, we are able to produce uh, 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 the follow-up land use map. So, covering uh, Africa 30 degrees to 30 degrees south uh, for 15 classes. Uh, and of course, this includes all forest loss which occurred between 2001 to 2020. And uh, we assess the map uh, uh, with an accuracy of around 82%. 
Uh, so just going into a bit of detail. So this is uh, the output which we uh, 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 produce. So it's basically based on areas which is covered by planet data, uh, planet Nikifi data. And uh, so just to show zooming in on some part of the areas, you can see uh, you, uh, a lot of deforestation in Ghana, for example, uh, being caused by uh, cocoa, uh, uh, cocoa uh, farming, but also uh, you can see a lot of oil palm. And the, the important thing you can see that most of them, for example, oil palm and rubber, they're mostly located in the southern part, but also you can see uh, very small patches of forest which has been left. And you also have artisanal mining activities, which uh, are mostly around uh, across the rivers going from uh, north to central part of the, of the country. Also uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, so for example, this is one of the forests, it's called House of Sandra Forest. They were kind of deforested because of cocoa establishment. Uh, it was a protected forest, but now it has been kind of converted to cocoa. Uh, uh, this is like in Tanzania, also you can see a lot of uh, cashew. So this is kind of a uh, eastern part of the country between in the border between Tanzania and Mozambique. We have a lot of cashew uh, 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 farming, which have been converting a lot of dry forest to, to cash crop. But of course, you can also see an increase in terms of settlement areas, meaning that uh, there's a lot of uh, economic activities because of cash plantation, also population increase. Uh, we also identify large scale cropland. Basically, uh, this uh, is uh, Zambia. So uh, this area is characterized, of course, by large scale cropland, but over time, the increase in farming because of large scale cropland and the dry light forest conversion has been increasing over time. Uh, we also identify rubber. So this, for example, if you go to uh, Cameroon and Angola, uh, sorry, Cameroon and uh, Gabon, you can see that uh, they are very big uh, rubber plantation which has been established recently uh, in the middle of the, uh, of the Congo Basin. We also uh, identify tea, so kind of in Kenya, so you can see like tea plantations uh, just at the border with the forest. So, and this of course, if you see the changes over time kind of increasing towards the, the forest. So this also poses a, a kind of a risk to existing forest because you know it's, some point this forest is going to be even more deforested. We also, this is a bit of uh, like in Ethiopia here, you have like uh, coffee under the canopy. So basically they, you have trees, they don't really like remove trees. They only plant coffee under the canopy. And uh, so with uh, very high detail, you can be able also to identify that and uh, be able to classify and uh, monitor that over time. Uh, one important aspect also identified, for example, in this is in Angola, you can see there was an establishment of large scale cropland, you can also see the changing pattern of the lake because of the irrigation uh, uh, activities which are taking around those areas. And uh, lastly, uh, in DLRC, uh, this is mostly dominated by small scale cropland. Uh, and. Uh, uh, in most of the of the deforestations, but also you, you can see some of the very small uh, changes uh, caused by oil palm uh, and also like uh, loads, which are probably are logging activities taking place in these areas. So as I said, uh, this uh, product was evaluated uh, with Anacos two. Most of the classes performance uh, around 80. And of course you have like pasture uh, uh, performance dropping a bit uh, around 60 to 70 percent. Uh, we also identify the hotspots, so you can see most of the hotspots, like for uh, cash crops, so uh, like uh, cashew, uh, also uh, oil palm and cacao, mostly located in Western Africa, and you can see like uh, the Small scale coal plants are mostly distributed throughout, uh, which is showing that it's a dominant uh, land use uh, conversion causing deforestation. And uh, of course, using uh, those data, you can see the, uh, the pattern. So this is kind of showing you that where most of the 
conversion are taking place, but also the percentage of, uh, of these land use and where are they coming from. So you can see mostly the dominance of a small scale crop plant, but also we have these classes uh, for the uh, land use conversion, which are really not associated with any of these land use conversions. And uh, also uh, you can see pasture, uh, cacao and mining activities. So this gives you an impression in terms of what amount of conversion and the not proportion is taking place in these areas. But uh, in, in addition, you can also like this data set to try to understand the dynamics. So the, the history of changes and what kind of activities are taking place. So for example, here you can see on the left, uh, you have like this small town was kind of over time. So increasing in settlement, but also small scale Copeland, but also you can see roads increasing over time, but also disappearing this uh, design color. And this show that kind of logging activities and those roads are kind of being, uh, uh, because of regrowth and uh, maybe log activity has ceased. So there is a regrowth taking place. And on the light, you can also see uh, a lot of conversion, but initially there was only like a small proportion of mining activity, but later you see a lot of small scale agriculture coming in and uh, that shows you that uh, you have two types of drivers so you have like a primary driver and probably a secondary driver so you have like mining coming in and because of mining then and people moving in so you also have some small scale ag agriculture but also as activities taking place in those areas so uh what's the next step uh so this was done for africa and currently we are, do, we are trying to do it for uh, South America and uh, uh, Southeast Asia uh, also to uh, identify to, to have the same kind of products. And uh, what you are doing, of course, now we are trying to get more data uh, in collaboration with Citizen Science, uh, uh, IASA, but also we are working on trying to uh, kind of identify because mostly the prediction is based on confidence. So specifically, because we are putting more emphasis on commodity crops. So for example, what time since the deforestation can you able to confidently say this is a conversion due to rubber or oil pump? So that's also something we are working on so that whenever we do the prediction, there is be some kind of confidence and, and uncertainty attached to the product. Uh, so just to show this is a uh, current tree, what we have as uh, the data, we are still, as you can see, uh, in South Asia, we are still uh, struggling to get data. So I also take this opportunity if uh, uh, you know, like data somewhere or you have data or you know uh, where I can be able to get some data in this location, maybe we can contact and probably try to see if we can work together. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Robert, for the good presentation. Um, any feedback, questions, suggestions? Anyone? Thank you very much. That was a, a really good presentation. Um, one of the um, uh, characteristics that uh, we have seen in some of our validations at YASA is the different patterns of deforestation based on the region. Uh, for example, in, in some countries of Latin America and Africa, there could be more like a shifting agriculture pattern uh, where it's not like this great land, land masses, right? So I was wondering if you, if you, um, uh, in, in part of the project, if you differentiated or, or if you could capture this heterogeneity in terms of parents of the forestation and uh, how you went about it. Yeah, uh, thank you for a good question. So basically, uh, that's why we, we had like a process of active learning because of course, not only about heterogeneity, so also about uh, the uh, the amount of data. So we do this iteratively. So basically you do the training and then uh, you don't give the model the whole data set. Uh, or what you do, do the training and also assess the model performance and you try to do the prediction, you assess the map 
you learn from the map, you, uh, you additional information to the map, and then in that way, the kind of the model keep improving in terms of performance. Uh, but also there is an uh, important aspect, which is location-based, so the uh, latitude and longitude coordinate, so that is spatial uh, uh, localization of the uh, deforestation drivers. I think that that's also important uh, during the model training process. Hi, Robert. Uh, nice work. You said you're moving to South America and you're collecting data from South America. So if you work in Brazil, please take a look at the data, land use data, which is available from the so-called Terra class products and products from Amazonia and Terra class from Amazonia and Cerrado. Uh, they are good data and could be useful for what you do. So please stay just uh, don't, I mean, uh, look at that data and compare with other sources before you just take the data used for Africa, because there's more data in Brazil, especially than the ones you use for Africa. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any other question? Any suggestions? A great talk. Uh, just, just wondering how you uh, did those great animations where these land use maps were uh, zooming out into the diagrams there. That was really cool. What's the library or technology behind that? Uh, uh, that's uh, it's, it's a simple script, basically okay. uh, moving pixels from one location to the other. So you just need to a location of where the pixel will be moving and uh, in a cyclic form. Uh, and of course, I will, this was adapted to uh, uh, someone who is still like in development, like code to also. So I can share with you the link to the GitHub. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. That's great.